if you have that kind of loan burden which only you can pay off then definitely take the safer route i'm i'm, I'm a big believer in that so as soon as 911 happened then my ppo was resigned and like oh sure now to get in the placement cycle now placements were coming up and then godra happened so who said was going to come to the campus then come to the campus to give you a situation if i would have stayed at uh yahoo for six more months which means till about july or 2013 uh at that time at that stock price i would have made over stacks about 1.5 crore okay awesome And the first question I asked Gaurav is, Gaurav, how tall are you? One ninety, one centimeter, six feet four inches. Please have a seat. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, six feet four, definitely a basketball player. And uh, <laughs> what else? Like, what else should I be uh, predicting about you and you growing up and your childhood? No, so you got the first one right. Basketball player for sure. Also a swimmer and a fast bowler. So I think because of the height. all these two three things get unlocked for you right but yeah i had a great childhood back home in jaipur i call it down the road academically i was never the topper in fact maths used to be a big stumbling block for me but apart from maths i was good at all the other subjects so i was above average when i was in 6th standard there were five gorovs uh, in my class and every year one of them used to fail so by the time i reached 10th i was the only one only gorov from the 6th batch and i was horrible at maths so like if i have to go down i'll go down in flames in in 10 in boards uh, but i got 61 somehow i passed maths but apart from maths i was decent at everything else uh, completed my 12th and then i went to bombay for my graduation i was at sydney 3 years and i think that's where the whole interest about the corporate life what do you because i come from a business family i i come from, i'm the black sheep of my family the only person who's in a salary job it is never like destined that i was going to be in a corporate career or salary job but that's that's where bombay i think being at sydney part of the media society over there got exposed to unilever ogilvy and metho i don't know and i understood how brands are built during the 2 3 years over there that's what stoked the uh, curiosity little bit of exploration understanding made me understand myca might be a good place so I took my cad in 1999 at that time cad was for the 6 iams mdi and myca only 6 8 in stees used to be through myca uh, through cat and i got through cat uh, went to myca in 2000 and yeah that's that's been the academic journey. see myca journey is a little interesting you were telling me that you know in between gujarat riots and the kind of economic recession that us was going through the labor market crisis that was there 911 happened all of this was happening while you were in college right so how was that experience like when you ended up in myca were you scared were you thinking that you know kya chal raha hai I think within a month of reaching Myka there was a flood I'm mean, like you know Ahmedabad had not seen rains like that for 60 years so the entire campus was flooded there snakes scorpions and like okay can't get worse than this but then fast forward to 2001 uh my now wife at that time girlfriend her dad was commanding a brigade at a at a place called Dharandra he was a brigadier so we were there on 25th Jan uh four five friends of us because 26th Jan being a holiday and that's when the earthquake happened we didn't realize the enormity of the earthquake because you are out near run of kutch open wide spaces when we came back came back to the campus then we saw like you know the city had been flattened i mean you saw like tall skyscrapers like broken down in half and then summers happened then i think i i got a i i, de- I did decently well during my summers i got a ppo uh so i was really chilled out i was like happy but then 911 happened so as soon as 911 happened then my ppo was resigned and like usher now to get into the placement cycle now placements were coming up and then godra happened so and at that time internet wasn't like so big that you can you can have like online calls and all economy was in a bad shape after 911 if you guys have read about it so who say was going to come to the campus then come to the campus so we used to get like there was there used to be a 4 hour break from 4 or 8 hours break i don't remember what from midnight till early morning so we used to like you know just ride down to kalupur station take the train go to bombay for interviews come back so so myka was insane amount of fun irrespective of all the things that i'm telling you i think the two best years of my life and when we were graduating we gave ourselves a t-shirt with the name written the bachelor survived it all 
I think a similar batch who survived was the pandemic batch and probably they have seen a lot as well and, and you might just meet a lot of them while you hire from that pandemic batch later on. Gaurav, a lot of people consider Maika to be the OG of marketing. Why do you think this status has been given to this particular place? I think the first and foremost thing is the DNA that uh, Maika imbibes. Like I had a very good CAT score but not on like a sectional basis, which is why I didn't get any IMs call. I got an SPGen call. But the fact of the matter is that Micah was generous or curious enough to actually even like get a person like me in. And that's where you, we had like insane amount of heterogeneity. You had like really, I mean, you had a lot of people from humanities background. You had a lot of engineers coming through. I'm a commerce graduate. I came through. And we were, most of us were freshers. A lot of like uh, postgrads actually put a lot of focus on two, three, four years of work X. I think what Micah, at least back then, I think Micah has also gone down the whole work X route now and so on and so forth. But then at that time, you had the most bohemian, the most heterogeneous crowd in the country. And uh, marketing, what I've understood till now, after being in this field for some time, is that you have to be insanely curious. You have to read or educate yourself about things that you might think, might not even know will impact your work. So that curiosity, that inherent curiosity was the DNA of Micah which is what is the biggest muscle that a marketer can have. And that's why I think Micah does well in marketing on growth functions. You mentioned that there were issues in terms of placement and did that hamper your uh, you know, expectation that you had? So for example, when you go to a B school, when you spend uh, some amount of money, you have an expectation in mind that, you know, I'm definitely going to get the desired amount of ROI from this, from the course that I've done. So, full disclosure, I was the last person to be placed on campus. In fact, I wasn't placed while till the convocation. I was placed the day after uh, because I didn't like a couple of jobs that came, up, came my way and I got out of the placement cycle. But then, there, there are two aspects to how I thought about the placement. Your, your question about ROI, show of hands, maybe I can just ask you, fees between 10 to 15 lakh for the postgrad schools you guys are going to? Raise your hands if it's that. That, that time is gone. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna come 15 to 20 okay 20 to 25 okay 25 and above wow okay minus two lakh rupees right so I, I was never too concerned about that thing and and weirdly enough Paul I mean even when I was getting out of the campus without a job in hand I had no issue very frankly that might be because of my background coming from a business family you've seen highs and lows so these these things didn't like phase me too much in fact which is why i started my own business a year down the line so i mean like, i wasn't too bothered about not having a job when i was going out of campus gaurav do you think that this particular element that you brought in that it was just two lakh rupees that you spent and uh, probably it was not that big for you for a lot of people that probably is not the case they're spending so much money and they probably would want to become an entrepreneur or start something on their own but they are bogged down by the financial constraint. I was just hearing somebody, I mean, I was just eavesdropping. I should not have done it, but somebody was talking about, you know, how their bank loans are shifting from one bank to the other and, you know, what are the complications that they're having because they're going to join a B school. Like that, that element of, uh, you know, paying back that loan is always in the back of their mind. So does that change the kind of decisions that you take uh, as an individual also while you are done with your B school? Can you take these risks? Oh, absolutely. I, I'll be the last person to say that, like, you know, the responsibilities or the loans be damned and you do whatever you want to do. Uh, everybody's life situation is different. Mine was different. I, I was lucky enough to come from a privileged background where two lakh didn't matter uh, to me. Even if I didn't work for like a year, I'm like, even when I came back home to Jaipur, I'm like, my parents were like, you know, why are you doing this? I mean, just, I'm like, you know, no, I'll, I'll do it myself. But then, yeah, everybody's life story is different. So, Whosoever has bills to pay, I think that becomes like the first thing. You, I've, I've got this theory, you cannot innovate when you're under stress. So if you're under stress of meeting your bills and you're trying to do something, a lot of, I mean, like, you know, very rarely would you have one person who will actually get through, but then that person becomes like the story that everybody tells. As I said, I'm, I'm a, I, I like statistics. The statistics against this kind of success is not very good. I mean, like the, the probability of this coming through is not so good. So, so if you have that kind of loan burden which only you can pay off then definitely take the safer route I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer in that but 
on top of that thing, like I, I just told you about like, you know, starting a brand DNA. I'm like, you know, I had a startup in Jaipur when startups were like looked down upon and nobody understood. And I was traveling for two months or one and a half months every year. Uh, a lot of people do that now. That I could do only at that time. Uh, if I, I mean, a lot of people ask me, I've been on internet for the past 15 years. I meet investors, I meet like, you know, peers, I meet like, you know, other founders. I'm like, you know, very, very big founders. They're like, why am I not starting off? At the life stage that I, ha I am at right now, or financial responsibility, which might not be a loan, but as a father, as a son, as a husband, or whatsoever, or my expectations of my lifestyle, I might not be able to do a startup of my own today. So, so I think I'm a person who's a little bit rational, but then if you have to take a risk, look at your cost of failures. Even if, if everything goes peer-shaped, what is it that you have to lose? And I believe that you are all going to get into postgrad now. When I was in your stage, 2000, mein, us time I got MICA, maybe if I would have like, you know, put more, I, I might have gone to IMA or something. But at that time, losing that one year was like a huge thing on my head. Ki, yaar, ek sal nahi hai. But now that I look back on it, I'm like, yaar, what the hell? Yeah? I mean, like, if I had somebody telling me that one year doesn't matter when you're going to be living for 75, 80 years, then I might have done something different. This is the best time to take a risk. But again, the first port of call is like your responsibilities if you have to carry them out. Otherwise, this is the best time to take a risk. Lovely. And uh, was it a risk that you were taking when you uh, joined a company like Yahoo? Because there were two other offers also at that point in time, as you mentioned uh, over a call while we were having a chat. And you said that uh, all of a sudden you had three offers to choose from and you chose Yahoo at that point in time. What time was it? Why did you choose Yahoo? And what was the work that you were supposed to do and how much did you do there? So just prior to this, 2008 is when I joined Yahoo, but 2006 is when I came back to Gurgaon, again for personal reasons. So I shut up, I, I shut down uh, Brand DNA and I came down to Gurgaon while it was doing very well, but then I had to come to Gurgaon for personal reasons. From 2002 to 2006, November, it's almost four and a half years, my CV, no HR would uh, touch with a 10 foot pole also, right? Ki kuch to ye mein kuch ka kuch kar hai. Ek ek saal mein agencies chhod rahe and all that. So nobody would touch. And, and my peers, my batchmates are like all doing like what they're doing. I was earning more than them, but my CV was not the traditionally strong one. Yeah. So I got into an IT services company, one and a half years. Then I said that not enjoying it, IT services, I'm, I, I want to be at the forefront, not an IT services where it's B2B, I wanted to be in a B2C. At that time, I had three job offers. One was another IT services company called Vincolum. It powers all the retail backend of Mintra and Icas of the world today also. HCL Tech as an assistant, assistant brand manager, which would have been a really big thing, and Yahoo. So the three things because of which I, I, I let go of HCL and I chose Yahoo. The silliest one, I stay in Gurgaon, Yahoo is in Gurgaon, Noida, HCL, I'm like, you know, yeah, let me cut down my travel. That is the stupidest one. But then the next two were very well thought of. I wanted to get into digital. Uh, digital was just starting off in India. And Yahoo is the mothership of all consumer internet companies. I'm like, while you guys might not have any Yahoo mail IDs and all that, because I think it must have, it was a little bit earlier, but then Yahoo gave rise to some of the best technologies that we are using today. So I wanted to get in digital. Yahoo gave me a chance, so I went to Yahoo. And the third thing was that I wanted to do sales. I'd never done sales in my life prior to that. Halaki for brand DNA, I was like going and pitching and doing whatever. But then I wanted to learn sales because again, coming from business family, I understood the, the power of actually generating sales through your own hand, but I did not know how to do it. So Yahoo was giving me uh, a sales role, uh, team of one across the entire country of mobile internet, right? So I did not know anything about mobile internet. Mobile internet was nothing at that time, let alone internet. So, but the next one and a half years were insane because I took mobile internet to all parts of the country. As a solution perspective, learned how digital impacts marketing or, or works for marketing. And I understood, I, I learned mobile marketing before I learned digital marketing. So that was like a really weird curveball. And then for the next three years, I was heading one of the largest revenue verticals for Yahoo. By the time I left, I was heading, uh, generating about 24, 25% of Yahoo India revenue while any, I went to any Yahoo. Any struggles uh, that you faced during this time? Because what was happening at this particular role was, for the first time, you were in a setup which is pretty big. And for the first time, in the truest sense, you were in a corporate job. 
वेर यू वे हैंडलिंग चैलेंजेस डे टू डे चैलेंजेस आज इसको कुछ डिलीवर करना था वो नहीं आया हो यू हैव पीपल चैलेंजेस आल्सो यू हैव प्रेशर फ्रॉम योर बॉसेस आल्सो यू हैव प्रेशर ऑफ गोइंग टू यू नो मीट समबडी ऑन अ साइकिल वाइल यू आर इन योर सेल्स स्टेंट इन एनीथिंग दैट कम्स टू योर माइंड फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर एक्सपीरियंस डिजिटल वॉज समथिंग दैट नो बडी अंडरस्टूड इन द एंटायर कंट्री and yahoo was an extremely aggressive sales company extremely aggressive sales company so all of a sudden you're trying to pitch solutions that you yourself don't know what they're going to be doing for your client but that is the the first big roadblock that gave an insane amount of learning that you have to understand the stakeholders point of view as good if not better than that person because once you understand what that person wants in his or her professional uh, capacity then you'll be able to do better and i think because i used to go and like you know ye yahoo ka email hai ye le lo i'm like people like what the hell do i do with that thing because i was pitching it from an inward perspective justice to my role then i have to understand what does yahoo do for the other person and that kind of curiosity was the single biggest learning out of that roadblock the second big roadblock paul was that funnily enough i was the one who used to land like the really big deals like a couple of million dollar annual deals and so on and so forth some of them were governmental deals and i was still like fairly early in my career 6 7 years and governmental deals were shady mm. yeah and all of a sudden you have yahoo which is like a us company zero tolerance for even like a rupee here and there and just to navigate through that kind of a cesspool was quite uh, high pressure uh, because you have to deliver revenue also but the other guy is not going to sign off on the things like like i used to pitch to the commonwealth <laughs> <laughs> So so those you can who are not that. aware of why we are chuckling at Commonwealth please go back and read a few headlines as to what happened and yeah i mean that's part of the murky world of corporate uh, as we call it but yeah i mean continue please just to round it off i mean the worst thing is nobody teaches you about these things so guys i mean like you know what starts to happen is the worst thing that happens in corporates is that they promote you right and and that might sound very counterintuitive everyone wants to get promotion more money more responsibility better designation that corner office but the fact of the matter is that nobody trains you for the responsibilities that come through with that promotion or the pressures that come so all of a sudden when i'm like you know in the same room as the commonwealth officials and they ask everyone else to go and you are the only one who's pitching to four or five people and they have an explicit ask how do you navigate that without letting go of your ethics or your company code and so on and so forth i think after repeated failures then we kind of like landed that deal without paying anything and so on and so forth but that is maybe one thing that you guys should be thinking about nobody is going to be teaching you for the next step that you take so when you go to your post grads and so on and so forth, it's going to be a step jump from your mm-hmm. undergrad don't expect somebody is going to coach you ki acha ab ye karna hai ye karna hai it's going to be on the job learning unfortunately i think things have gotten better but then i don't think it's where it needs to be so yeah and i think this experience might just help them and uh, we also have programs in uh, all uni uh, where we help these kind of students there is a super 30 program and also there are mentors who teach them in the ways in their professional life as to where they are and what they can do and probably that is of help so whoever is interested it's my brand plug here you can go and check those programs out <laughs> moving back to your uh, journey uh, got of you know the next step that you took was once you were done with your learning at yahoo you thought that you would join a place which is probably not even 1/10th of the stature of what yahoo was and that was olx and it's a startup again so what was that choice and decision like and if somebody is in the crossroad right now in their journeys how do they make that uh, decision that you did yeah no it's a great question um, i think sometimes we can be be overtly analytical in our choices as in when you get into your professional careers you'll see that there is no perfect data set to make your observations or decisions on so you'll always be given an imperfect data set when i say data set researches insights market situation anything you will never have everything tick 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 100 out of 100 so in that case you have to make like big decisions with an imperfect data set so again because of my background i was fairly at ease with chaos about like getting a couple of big things in your head right and say ki okay baki sab ho jayega but i think don't be 
bogged down when you seek here, I'm not getting all the answers. If you get the directionally good, big, broad answers checked off, it's good enough. So, so the reason why I went to OLX, and OLX was 1,000th, not even 1 tenth. I mean, like nobody knew what OLX is at that time. But then, by then I kind of completed my Yahoo journey. I had a lot of stocks at Yahoo, a lot of RSUs, which should have vested in six months. And this is where you guys will also see sometimes it's like a fork in the road. Which one do you opt for? Mercifully, I've always like, uh, my, my risky decisions have always paid well for me. To give you a situation, if I would have stayed at uh, Yahoo for six more months, which means till about July of 2013, uh, at that time, at that stock price, I would have made over stacks about 1.5 crore. Uh, easy. I mean, like, you know, that would have been money in the bank. And uh, at that time, I can tell you my salary was 29 lakh rupees. So it's not that this, it's still con uh, it's four times of my salary at that time. I think my learning had stopped at Yahoo. I understood digital. I had like been at the forefront that Yahoo was doing. Now the first two or three things I understood about OLX was that it has got money. It was backed by Naspers. Naspers is one of the savviest investors in the world. Uh, to give you an idea, Naspers invested $40 million for a 40% stake in a small Chinese company called Tencent. Have you guys heard about Tencent? Yes, yes. Do you know what's the valuation? Anyone? You're right. I think at the peak, Tencent was at about 800 billion. So that 40 million, 40% 40 stake at 800 billion, you guys do the math. So one of the savviest investors, and not just like Tencent, many other. So Naspers owned OLX, so I knew that money is taken care of, won't be an issue of money. The person who hired me, I got on very well with him, Amarjeet Singh Batra. He started off Spotify in India. He's still running Spotify. I was getting the marketing head position over there. And uh, fairly early in anybody's career, I was a CXO at the, I'm like, say, 10 years into my career. And guys, maybe this would be easy now, but at that time, when I got into workspace, extremely hierarchical, 2002. Uh, and this is 2013, so uh, extremely hierarchical. So you don't hit your CXO stint till about 25 years into your career. So I was getting a chance to do this. And like, Pesa hai, I like the person that I'm working with business model baad mein dekhenge, but let's see, uh, let's let's go. So so that's that's how OLX happened. JD defined tha. Amar said, aaja fir dekhenge kya hoega. But yeah, I mean like, you know, that's that's where you have to just like look at the broad strokes. I had to let go of one and a half crore worth of stocks, right? right? So so JD be damned, I mean like I was letting go of the money so much. In 2013 would have been like much more. And this this kind of stupidity has remained with me throughout my career. Amar didn't give me a very big hike also. <laughs> He gave me a 35 lakh, I love you 20 odd percent, but I said, let But the first six, eight months did well, and he gave me an out of turn promotion uh, hike and made it 45 lakh within six, seven months. So that is his good thing. Maybe he was just like wanting me to show my metal. Did well. But uh, I think the biggest problem that you guys will have, and I'm sure you guys are going to great postgrad schools, is because even today, not even two years hence, you guys know that you are set for life. Yeah, this is like something that all of you will carry that confidence. You guys will easily crack through good institutes, uh, sorry, organizations, and you'll keep on growing. So your next 40 years is very well charted out today. How do you make sure that you actually let go of that surety and dive into an imperfect data set driven dis uh, decision is gonna be something that you guys will have to navigate. I'm not saying that you be like, Dekhenge Joga and just scoot jao. I'm not the person. But then I think if you get a broad sense of a couple of things doing well, which are the most important thing about that opportunity, it might be interesting for you guys to look at. But yeah, a great postgrad is the enemy for giving in to these kind of uh, opportunities. A certain number was uh, promised to be by my, by my media agency. By investing this 8-9 crore on IPL, you will get to a certain number of people. Fair enough. So the campaign starts, IPL starts, and I'm looking at my matrix on a daily basis, and I'm seeing that the numbers are flatlining. Like, what's going on? And I see my weekly media delivery numbers, they're 20% above the promised number. So my media deliveries are doing much better, my business numbers are stagnant. And this trend continued, in fact, my numbers started to go down. So within the first three months, I failed spectacularly. I almost like, I almost like, 8 crore rupees. 
Um, so the moment somebody sees like a banner with Virat's face on it, the implicit trust or attention towards that particular banner and that brand starts to become a little bit better. And because of which your CTRs start to go up. Once the CTR goes up, if I was making a bid of 10 rupees earlier per click, now I can make a bid at 8 rupees and still get that click. So you're almost shaving off 20% on the larger spend on your PNL. So sometimes like the multi crore that you would give to a really big brand ambassador, if that person starts to work for you, it starts to optimize your larger cost by a huge degree.